like briefly tell us who you are, you know, tell us a little bit about the company and then um, we can expand into that a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, it's a big question, but, um, my name is Dustin Baker. I'm president of a company called bioprotein technology. Bioprotein technology makes the product biopro plus, which is kind of how people know about us, right? Biopro plus is a non-synthetic alternative to prescription human growth hormone and peptide treatments. Um, so we, we make those products here in Tampa. We, um, we distribute them all over the world. I mean, we've been shipping to over 40 different countries now. We're on every continent other than Antarctica. It's been a pretty wild. Wow. Uh, yes, technically, yes. It's been a pretty wild ride. And uh, it's all, the company Bioprotein Technology has been around since 2009. However, myself and my team acquired it in 2018. So Biopro Plus came about in about 2021. So 2021 was really when the company you know, okay. got its stronghold on what we do. And it's been a pretty wild ride. I mean, we're at the beginning of 2024 and, you know, we've done what we have so far and it's just very exciting time in the brand's history, I will say. And hopefully we can continue to keep making that happen. Well, I'll be honest that, 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 the timing uh, makes a lot of sense, but it's in terms of how I found out about you mm -hmm. and the, the sort of the connection we made, because I, we connected after I knew about you and kind of knew about the product, but I only knew about it just sort of from some of the people I had seen talking yeah. about it a little bit. Um, and right away I was like, I get where this, this is going. I want to know a little bit more about it. So I was talking to people, not you about that first. Yeah. And then ultimately we got connected and I talked to you about it and you confirmed and validated some things that I thought this was about. And I want to talk to the audience about this a little sure. bit um, in terms of, so they have a better understanding because I understand how human physiology works. I understand a bit about hormones. I understand about growth factors. I understand about, how the body does certain things at certain times, maybe in, in, in a person's life, particularly yep. in males' lives. And something I was obviously very interested in, I'm 49 now. And um, I, wanted to, I wanted to know it better and ultimately give it a try. And when I gave it a try, I was like, okay, there's something to this. And it's tough because when you talk to other people, like, well, where can I find out more? Well, you have to have a large understanding of kind of all of the concepts. Otherwise, you're going to dip into a rabbit hole. Sure. You're going to be talking about a lot of different things that if you don't have a stranglehold or, a, sorry, a good hold on that, yeah. you can get lost and it can, it can sound and look very weird. And I think there's a danger in other people trying to explain it that don't really understand it because that can lead to confusion and like a misguided sort of approach to understanding it better anyhow. Um, so I think that's a lot with anything though, right? Uh, like agreed. anything that has, um, a little bit of depth to it and it, it's, you start to tap into whether it's, whether it's mechanics, like even, you know, auto engines, right. You can't just go and look at something and you not understand how, you know, valves and pistons and work and how they connect through the transmission, like how you're actually generating power and then transferring it to the wheels of an automobile. It would be the exact same thing with human physiology of understanding the components that go into it. Mm -hmm. And then how that you know, let's just use the same analogy as getting traction, right? <laughs> traction in your body um, from a physiological standpoint. So just jumping in and, and doing broad range searches is a great place to start, but you have to understand, or at least have a general foundation and grasp of the the, the entirety of the situation. And, and then it starts to make a lot more sense. But I, I don't believe that's indicative specifically of us. I think that's anything that has to do with the kind of world that we, the you know, play in. Particularly now, you know, and, and sure. how... It's not a, it's not an issue of not having enough information, right? This it's almost too much information. I was asked the other day, I was on some like, sort of like, uh, like business radio show thing. And they're like, what would you, what's the piece of technology you wish would exist now or something like that? And I was like, I wish it didn't, I wish we had less and for a plethora of different reasons, but it's almost so much that it could be at a, a detriment um, we talked about earlier, like of actual human beings doing producing of things and not, you know, funny business things ideas. That, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that, you know, have a, have a, a value placed on them by the individual holding them, not necessarily an actual value in, in let's just say the economy or society at large, but, um, something tangible. Yeah. Though. So I wish there was sometimes less technology, right. I think it would save us from a lot of our own, you know, problems, but, um, yeah. At the same time, you've harnessed a lot of that technology to do the things that you've done with your company. Yes, that's true. <laughs> um, I, I would agree with you. Um, yes, technology has been one of our largest assets. I'm literally saying the exact same opposite. Of what <laughs> I just said, but it, you know, I do hold strong in my beliefs, but yes, technology has been a huge benefit to us. I, I will tell you that I fought a lot of that technology tooth and nail. I, if that's the expression, um, 
And, you know, I succumbed to some of it and, and a lot of it has worked um, to our benefit either by accident mm -hmm. or um, by implementation. But yes, it has helped us quite a bit. <laughs>